we have an amazing guest. I've been following this guy for a while as beer reviews on YouTube. Um, and it's it's really an honor and a privilege for me to finally get to speak with the man himself, Greg Puckett from Greg's Beer Reviews. How are you doing today, Greg? Uh, super wonderful. I've already got home and had a beer or two, so uh, pretty good. How are you and how is everybody out there today? I'm doing great, man. I'm I, I can't tell you how psyched I am. I mean, to me, you're you're like a celebrity to me. Like whenever <laughs> whenever I'm going it. through trying to find people to interview, you know, I, I tried to I tried reaching out to you before. I'm not sure if it was the wrong email address or something, but I couldn't be more excited to be speaking with somebody right now. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate that, Rocky. Yeah, not a problem. So actually, before we before we get any further, I you brought up an amazing point on one of your well on several of your beer reviews about how not enough breweries put dates on bottles anymore. Like what <laughs> I was going through my local uh, liquor store, which is a huge, it's we, we have what's called, it's called Lucas liquor over here in St. Louis. And it's like a Walmart of beers right. and I can go through and mix a six pack, you know, anything I want. They have an amazing selection, but I've noticed like brands like uh, anchor they will go through so much trouble putting paragraphs of stories of, you know, trees that they have that they've gathered leaves from to make maple ales, but they cannot put the date on the bottle. It's so really amazing sometimes that the breweries go to the the elaborate means to to put all kind of information on there and won't put the date on there. So I mean, it's that's my soapbox to stand on. I, I really harp on having dates and not nothing at all or some kind of Julian code because the average consumer doesn't know what a Julian code is and all that. So, And you, you really shouldn't have to have a calendar to figure out when the beer was put in the bottle or what its best by date is. So I, I really harp on that, having the dates. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't go to the store and buy a gallon of milk or, or a loaf of bread and didn't have a date on it. So, I mean, I, I kind of feel that way with craft beer. Now, if you're, if you're brewing something that's a big alcohol beer, like a stout or something like that, it's eight, nine, ten percent or even higher, unless it's an IPA or a double IPA with a bigger alcohol, you, know, you kind of need that information. And, and even if it's a, a low ABV beer, if you're getting a four or four and a half percent up to a five percent beer, it has a it has a certain shelf life. And if it goes beyond that, it's, it's gonna it's not gonna have the the, the best flavor. Uh, uh, just like milk. I mean it's going it's not gonna go so much bad. Now, it can go bad with a low ABV ABV beer, but uh, it's this information as a consumer that we need to have, and it's good. It's a win-win situation for us and for them. I mean, if you buy a beer from uh, Joe's Brewery down the street and it's fresh and you drink it and you like it, you're more likely to go buy more and recommend it to your friends. Now, if you go to the store and and they have Joe's Brewery beer and it doesn't have a date on it and it may not be a big seller, and it may sit on that shelf for a year before you come by and say, oh, let me pick that up. And you pick it up, and it's a 45 or 5% beer, and it starts it's kind of funky when you open it up because you don't know how old it was when you got it, and you're not going to go want to buy it again. So uh, it, it's a loss for the brewery, and it's a loss for the consumer. So that's, that's the way I feel about it. We need to have that information on there. Even if it's a, if it's a big beer, like a stout, ten percent, just put a year on it. So that that way, you know how long you can sell it, or and how long it's been in the bottle. Exactly, and you know, like you said, if I get a beer and I pop it open and it tastes like shit, I'm not going to want to go out and buy another one of those. I'm not going to want to try it again. Yeah. And you're going to tell all your friends, man, that was nasty. I, I wouldn't buy that again. And and I'm sure I've probably heard a lot of breweries feelings because I really don't pull any punches when I do my beer reviews, and a lot of people like that. I don't, uh, I'm not sponsored by any brewery, and I don't pull favorites of them usually. Uh, I try to support the local breweries if they're worth supporting, and most of them around here are. They, they do a really good job, but they're so, they're so small that they don't have the you know, distribution to, uh, to get their beers out in the other states and things like that. So, but yeah, I, I don't really pull any punches. I tell it like it is, and a lot of my subscribers like that. Oh yeah, that's that's probably why you're one of the more successful beer reviewers on YouTube, man. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to give you know if, if I don't you know there's certain styles that I like more than others. I'm a I'm a hop head. I, I grow my own hops, so I like the hoppy beers, and uh, I like uh, the darker beers, the porters and the stouts and stuff. 
and and, and I even review beers that are low ABV porters and stouts, and some of them are good and some of them are not. It just depends on what crowd they're after, and there are certain crowds that want certain types of beers. Uh, people that like lagers, and, you know, like I did for 30 years, and people that like uh, hoppy beers and, and don't like stouts, and there's people that like stouts and don't like hoppy beers. So your uh, beer is subjective. It is uh, what one person likes, the next person might not like. Sure. And in what, sta- in what stage your palate is in, too. If you've never drank a hoppy beer and you're coming off of a macro beer, when I say macro, guys, I'm talking Coors, Miller, Budweiser. Uh, if you drank that's the only thing you've ever had, you're more than likely not going to want a really super hoppy beer or a, a thick, heavy stout. You're more than a transitional beer. And that's what I call some of these lighter tasting beers. They're not after the true beer connoisseur or, or an experience, like yeah, even a home brewer or somebody like that, that actually knows what goes into beer and, and what it takes to make more taste and more hop flavor and all that stuff. Uh, it's an acquired. The more you drink that stuff, the more you transition into that stuff, the more you're going to be able to tolerate bigger beer. When I first got into craft beers, uh, I, I bought a dogfish head 60 and a dogfish head 90. And I tried the 90, and it just, I mean, I thought it was awful. I mean, it just it was just too strong for my palate at the time. And I thought the 60 was really tasty. Now, I still find the 60 tasty, but I, I find the 90 kind of tasty too now. So my palate has adjusted over time. And that's that's what's funny about, you know, if, if about beer in general is that if somebody gets online and they type in the top 10 beers or the t- top 20 beers in the world, Dogfish had 90 minutes going to be on there. Yeah, I mean, I just seen it on a top 10 list this week. And somebody, if somebody's new to beer and they go in and try that, it's probably not going to be their favorite. And they're like, well, I thought yeah. this was one of the best beers in the world. What's going on? It's exactly right, because their palate has not advanced to that stage. And there's so many people doing beer reviews, uh, not so much as many on video on YouTube and those other uh, avenues, but uh, they do reviews on rate beer and... and uh, uh, beer advocate for, you know, they, just about everything they drink, they'll write up something and, and post it there. Now, some of them are home brewers and beer reviewers, uh, but they get, you know, from them rating, they determine the overall. They average all that out, what everybody thinks, and that's how you get your score. Well, and there's and the, and the, and the, and the ratings vary. Uh, you'll read one, and the guy loved it, and the next one, the guy did not like it. And that's what I'm saying. It's, it's objective. If, uh, if, you, if, you've never, if you're drinking Budweiser, you go grab a uh, a Russian Imperial Stout or a, a Bell's Hop Slam, you're not going to probably like either one of them because they're just going to blow your palate out of your mouth. Well, that brings up kind of an interesting point. Um, I do want to get into like how the show started, all these all these beginning things, but you kind of brought up something I have on my list of questions, which I do have a whole list for you. I finally got a chance to pick your brain, man. I got a bunch of questions to ask you here. But before we get into the beginning stages... Um, just while you're speaking on it, is there really like a type of beer that you tend to dislike but will still review just for the sake of reviewing it? I, I try not to. Uh, I don't review the macro lagers. Uh, I have done some different variations of some of their stuff, but I don't support the big guys. I support the craft brewers and the local brewers and beers that have actual taste to them and not something that's been produced for a mass, uh, you know, a lot of times with younger audience, but I, I have a friend that's as old as I am, and he drinks Miller Lite, and I've tried to get him to try some other stuff, and he just likes the taste of Miller Lite, and it has no taste, so I don't know. Uh, I think he likes to go to the bathroom more than he likes to taste the beer, so that's the way I feel <laughs> about that. But anyway, uh, it, it, just, it just depends on, on, on what, what you like to drink and transition into something with a little more taste. Do you remember, um, I guess, your first beer or the first time you had a beer? I'm sure it was, was it one of the bigger macros at the time, I'm sure? Yes, it was, because I'm in my 50s, so I started drinking beer when, and I don't know, probably mid-70s. So I started off, that was basically the only thing that was around then, unless you, you know, were in some kind of import, and there were no craft breweries at the time. So your your big three were the Miller Buds and the Chorus. So and I and I think I don't know exactly what my first one was, but the real popular thing in the mid seventies for high school people was uh, the Miller Pony Bottles. 
and they don't even make those anymore. They come in like eight packs, and they were like little eight ounce bottles, little clear eight ounce bottles. And all the reason we was buying them because it was cheap, and it was in a small bottle, so it didn't get hot. That's the problem with a lot of lagers. They're really good ice cold. That's what I call lawnmower beers. But uh, once uh, once you get into the ales and stouts and other type of beers and Belgians and wheat beers and stuff, a lot of those, uh, I mean, you especially the porters and stouts, they get better as they warm up to room temperature, and especially the bigger ones, you know, 10, 11, 12 percent or uh, that you get all the chocolate and all that kind of stuff in it. But on the lagers, I, I, when I do drink a lager or a wheat beer or something like, like that, I call it wild beer, uh, I, I like it ice cold. And I don't want it to warm up. I want to finish it before it gets warmed up so it gets a grassy, grainy, uh, it's, an un, it's an unpleasant taste to me now that I've acquired the craft, craft beer taste, if you will. Well, when did you make the transition? I, I, I first experimented probably back in the 80s. There was a, a, a bar in Blacksburg up where Virginia Tech is at. Called, it was called the Ton 80 Club. And there was a dartboard uh, bar, and they had a bunch of dartboards, 10 or 15 of them up on the back wall. And this guy had like over 200 imported beers in stock. Was you know the craft beer revolution hadn't even started hardly then. So uh, that was a big thing for us to ride on the motorcycle up there and, and try some imported beer. And he kept a list of what you know. He had, kept everybody to come in, and you want to keep a record of it. Every time you came in, you try to drink something different. So back then, I, I started drinking uh, Bass and Killian's and, and other things that had a little more taste than the, the macro lagers did. And then, you know, kind of faded away from that. And I was a Budweiser drinker exclusively just about for 30 years, other than going up there and trying out some of those beers. And I really like those beers. And they still make those beers, but they don't, they don't taste the same because they're all been bought out by, the, by InBev and some of the others. And... and that, that, that their bottom line is to make money, not to provide. Because people are not drinking it then. Uh, back then, you drank it to get shit faced, basically. You know, catch a catch a bug and get drunk. And once you learn to appreciate it, especially me as I've gotten older, I don't like that feeling the next day. So if I drink three a night of a good craft beer, I'm usually done. And it, so I don't I don't session beers anymore, and I don't drink beer to get drunk anymore. I mean. The ABV is just a side effect. To me, I drink it for the taste. Right, and it's still like that. I mean, I know a lot of my buddies that go out just to get shit-faced, and, you know, they'll want me yeah. to go to a bar with them and get, you know, dollar fifty cent draft beers or whatever. They'll be drinking. I'll, I'll spend two fifty to get, like, a Black Butte or something, and they'll be drinking Miller High Life. And, yeah. you know, I really know this. But they can drink two or three for what you're going to pay for that one good beer. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. But, and they're going to get they're going to get drunker. So that's the thing about it. They're 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 after that effect you know, rather than the taste of the beer. Now the high the high life to me now it tastes like I'm drinking water off of a bike tire or something, just like yeah. dirty water. It's like fizzy yellow water. That's what we call it. Yeah. Well, what gave you the idea to to start your show? Well, actually, uh, once I uh, I got transitioned into the craft beer movement about five years ago and. Uh, I tried a uh, Sam Adams Boston Lager, mm -hmm. and that, that was the hoppiest thing that I ever tasted in my life. It was awesome. And then we had a local uh, startup brewery, uh, Run Up Rail House, and they produced a uh, piano lager, I think that's what it was, called Track One. And uh, one of the local watering coals uh, had that on tap, and I went down and tried that, and that, that was the bug, basically. The Sam Adams Boston Lager, I I wanted to try hoppier stuff because I could taste the hops in that. And all those beers were made with good ingredients. Uh, Jim Cook and, uh, and uh, all the, the craft brewers use real ingredients. They don't use adjuncts, which is a clear Cairo syrup looking uh, substance they put in to give head retention and stuff in the macro lagers. And rice and corn. Uh, and you don't need any of that. I mean, it just it, it, it dilutes the beer. Uh, it's not as good a tasting, and like I said, their bottom line is to make money instead of producing a, a full table now flavored beer. But now they're starting to wake up. Over the last three years, they've uh, uh, Blue Moon and some of the other, even Inbev and them have bought out other breweries such as Goose Island and stuff to get their share of that market. They realize, 
And but still, there, there's enough young kids and people that doesn't care what the beer tastes like. They'd like to go to a convenience store and, and, and pick up a suitcase of beer for nine ninety five. You know what I'm saying? Have 18 beers or so there or 24 and, uh, and have the quantity and some of the quality. It's kind of scary, too. I'm not scary, but it's off-putting a little bit to see how the big guys are trying to hide the fact that they own some some of the beer companies that are coming off as craft breweries. Like, they're really trying to make it look like they're hometown breweries. And, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. They do that all the time now. I mean, uh, a lot of the stuff that MBAP owns, there is no, does not have any answers to that. You only have to do your homework to find out who owns those. And they own over 80 breweries, so they own quite a few. But you're right, though. They are getting the hint, and they're they're trying to they're going to try to stranglehold that market too if they can. They did that right after prohibition. That's why they control the distribution now. What did you foresee the show being? I mean, what was your, what was your first ideas, and what did you think it was going to become? Well, after I got into the craft beers, I started checking things out on YouTube and run across beer reviews, and then I started checking into beer reviewers and. And I'll be honest, I, I watched uh, several people did it. Uh, Mark from uh, Bike Beer Reviews and Joe D and, and even Chad. And uh, and there was probably about five or six or seven of them that, I, you know, that did it and I started watching. And after you know, after a while of looking at it and, and seeing what they, how they were doing it and experiencing new beers for myself, I was like, wow, I, I believe I could do this too. So uh, I thought, what the hell, give it a shot. So. I started doing it. I had a, a real good store here that was uh, uh, had basically thousands of different craft beers and imported beers, stuff in Blacksburg, and uh, I started to, started going up there, and, and that worked out pretty good. And I enjoyed trying new beer. That was the biggest thing. And I figured while I was trying them, why not uh, do a review of them? So yeah, I did it on a whim to start off with, but it has really taken off and kind of blown away and humbled by the response I've gotten. Matter of fact, I think this is my anniversary month, and I've been doing them for four years now. Well, happy anniversary, man. Thanks. That's I awesome. It. So I guess, do the do the people that run the uh, the local, I guess, liquor stores, for lack of a better word, I guess they know you pretty well. Do they work with you, of like getting beers to you and everything? Uh, it's really hard. For me. I've tried that, and I had a good working relationship with the guy from Blackbird for a while, but that kind of went by the wayside after that. I don't know, two years, two and a half years, uh, and I won't get into details of what happened, but uh, another family member uh, kind of put the quietness on that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, but anyway, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there there are several places in town here, but they're both in high rent district areas, and of course, if you're paying high rent, you have to, you know, make your money back for that, so... They charge a little bit more for the beer than I personally think they're worth. Now, we do have a couple chain stores, Kroger's, and, and of course, Walmart and all them are here in town. And certain Kroger stores have really good selections, the bigger ones. Uh, but the, the Walmart just carries the basic generic stuff and gets a few of the craft, uh, craft beers here. So, I mean, you have, to do, you have to do your homework and know where to go to get some of this stuff. But, uh, no... Nah, I did have, like I said, a working relationship with that guy for a couple of years, but now I buy uh, stuff at the Kroger store. I hardly ever go into the high rent stores anymore, and uh, I get a lot of beer sent to me uh, from people that watch the show, subscribers, and I do, do a little beer trading, too. So uh, I send people beers that they can't get from this side of the country or the state, and I get beers from all over the place. I've got them from uh, over in Amsterdam and California, Texas, just about every state you can think of. And I got a guy that's going to be bringing me some beer from Brazil when he comes to New York next month. So I, I have a lot of subscribers that, that enjoy giving me beers or sending me trading beers uh, for just to see them being reviewed and see what I think of them. Oh, I would, I would enjoy uh, sending you some beer from over here. I mean, we have some local breweries like Morgan Street. You know, they only, they only give out beers and cans. I think they may only have like three styles, but. I'd like to send you some of those, see if you could try them. And... I'd be happy to review them. I, I love doing that. And I'll give you a shout out. And, and if you put any information that you want me to talk about, you know, about the brewery and stuff, as long as they're on right here or someplace like that, I can get some information or if they have a website. Sure. So, I can, you know, I can pull up that information as I'm doing the review. 
But uh, you know, if, if they don't have any of that and they're you know really small, you know, just get some information, write some information down or whatever. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. You, know, you give them acknowledgement. But like I said, I'm not going to pull any punches. I like to support some little local guys, but if they're making a crappy beer, <laughs> I'm going to say it's pretty average or, or whatever. No, that's that's what that's what everybody loves about you, man. You tell it like it is, and that's why whenever you whenever you really love a beer, you know, I'll go out and try it. I won't I won't worry about it being crappy, you know. Yeah, yeah, but usually the, the, the small guys they know that, so that's why I enjoy doing that because you you know very rarely from a small local brewery get a bad beer because I mean they're selling local and if they weren't any good they wouldn't be in business very long. So, I mean, you, you were talking about how you trade beers and everything. I mean, is that really, like, the coolest thing from that you've experienced from your show, or? It's enjoyable. The, the, the biggest downfall of that is shipping. I mean, the shipping is outrageous. A lot of times, the shipping costs more than the beers do. So, depending on where you're shipping and how you're shipping and how many you're shipping, uh, it, it can get kind of pricey. But, I mean, if you're into trying stuff, it's got, you know, rave reviews and stuff, and and it's not distributed there. The only way you're going to get it is trade to get it. So, have you ever gotten any blowback from a, a bad review that you've given, like th through the brewery or anything like that, where they've actually tried to contact you? Yes, I've actually had uh, had a brewery. I, I did a review and, and didn't give it good, and they contacted me and sent me a fresh bottle of it, and it was much better. Oh, really? Another another, another reason to stand up on that soapbox and talk about dates. Well, I'm really happy that you uh, that you tried Delirium Tremens for the second time, and you know because I really love Delirium Tremens. That first one that you were talking about, you said it had some floaties, it was just a bad bottle, but I'm glad that you decided to try it again. Yeah, and a lot of those beers are going to have going to have that, and you know a lot of the earlier reviews, I wasn't experienced, I was a rookie, and and, and knowing what beers to pour the sediment out of and what beers do not, but still um, there's a lot of beers where they hops will coagulate and it will settle down, especially if it sets for a while. And a lot of that is not a bad thing, but there's really no way to shaking it up other than pouring it out into the glass and stuff. But I'm not a big fan of floaties if it's or, or sediment if it's not supposed to be there. Because I brew beer, I'm a home brewer and I've been brewing beer and, and I don't filter my beer, but it, if if you do it right, all that stuff settles out and you don't transfer it back to the bottom. Have you ever thought about like starting a small brewing business and selling some of your beers? No, because I have so many friends that are doing that now. I belong to the homebrew several homebrew clubs here, uh, one in Blacksburg and one here in Roanoke. But a lot of them are trying. To, I have a good friend of mine that's uh, uh, just getting ready to open up a brewery at the beginning of the, of the month, at the beginning of the year, January. They're supposed to open up, and there are probably ten or fifteen guys in there that would love to do that. And when I first got into beer, I thought. That'd be something I'd love to, but I own my own business. I own a cap, custom cabin shop. I'm a cabin maker, and uh, that's not always as, as good as to be a business for yourself as you think it is. Uh, but it, uh, it could be. I mean, uh, I don't consider my beers as good enough that I want to market them because I, I think there are just as good beers out there, if not better. Uh, that's why I drink them. But what I do brew, actually, my wife drinks most of it. And she enjoys them. Absolutely. And, and I enjoy them, too. But it saves me money when I can brew it and you know, let her drink it, so me buying beer for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I, I wonder, like, at the beginning of every show, you, you go, obviously, see what's in the fridge today. And it seems like most of the time, it's always a fresh new line of beer that no. you have. No, I, I have... Uh, Three or four fridges, and, and when I do the beer runs, I do those videos. Once I stock the fridge, and I, I'll run it and, and do an intro of each fridge. And then I use that same matter of fact, the intro that everybody's watching today and yesterday and April and tomorrow. I did that. I did that beer run and intro back on June the 29th. And I just do the different fridge and just keep rotating it out. You know, it, it is, it's a different fridge every day if you can't. Or fridges back. <laughs> right. The magic of movie making. Yes, that's just part of it. So I don't do I don't go to the fridge and video that for each each day. And I have thought about that. And then and go ahead and have the beer that I'm gonna review for that and grab that beer out of the fridge. And that may come uh, I may incorporate that in twenty fourteen and, and 
and actually pull the beer that I'm going to review out for the intro. But it's just a little more work for me to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, from, from my end, it looks like, man, this guy is filling the fridge every day with new beer. It's insane. <laughs> I do spend more than I need to on it, that's for sure. Well, that's another question. How much How much does Greg Puckett spend when he goes and buys, he goes out and does a beer run? It just depends. Usually between $100 and $200, but I have done the start with beer and cigars on the, on the last total wine run in North Carolina, about $425. Wow. It's an expensive habit. It is, but like I said, there was, there was a few cigars mixed in with it. was probably $100 of cigars in there, too. So, uh, and, and all those beers, there is actually not room for those beers in the fridge. So, I have... The fridge is that I have a closet that has beer in it waiting to get into the fridge. Oh, wow. But I'm the kind of guy that I, once you get that many of them, either in the fridge or in the closet, you, you're not wanting to go drink all the good ones and stuff. So my my big thing is I don't drink the same beer twice in the same day. And a lot of those, like I said, when I go shopping, uh, I, I buy beers to review. When I go to the Kroger store or, or to pick up go-to beers that I drink when I'm not reviewing beers, I buy them down here because they're cheaper, and, and it's, it's, I'm not supporting the local guys by doing that. But the beer that I'm sucking down every day when I'm not reviewing beer, uh, I don't want to have to pay ten or fifteen dollars a piece for each one. So that really would get expensive. Oh, yeah. So the, the beers that I buy that you see on the reviews, most of them come from a craft beer store or something new that just come out at Kroger or something like that. But as far as my go-to beers, I, I really like, uh, my favorite is Bell's Two-Hearted Ale, because it's, like I said, I can get it at Kroger's, and uh, New Belgium Ranger, because I'm a hophead, but those are hoppy beers. Mm -hmm. Usually I have, like I said, two to three beers, and then, and then I'll go to something like a uh, Smutty Nose Robust Porter, or some kind of stout as the final beer of the evening. So what do you think is probably one of the most expensive beers that you've bought or had? Oh, well, a lot of the, the big wine size bottles, the 750 milliliters, were fairly pricey. Um, the most expensive uh, that I bought would probably be a Sam Adams Utopias, but I've actually never tasted them. Every one I've bought, I haven't opened yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have them in the cabinet in there, and I have, I think I have four different bottles, four or five different bottles of Utopias. Are those so they're those? Not like, they're not like regular beer. They're not carbonated. They're like 28%. So they're like they're like a liquor or uh, or something that you can actually open that off the top of it, pour some out, you know, screw the cap back on it, and put it back up in you know, on the shelf. So it's not going to go back. Are those those uh, the metal like almost magic yes. lamp looking bottles that you yes. have? Okay. Yeah, they're back there in the back of the beer reviews in the glass cabinet. Wow. Yeah, I, was, I always wondered what those were, but yeah, they're fairly pricey. They're between a hundred. If you if you get them retail, I mean a uh, wholesale or or what the the, uh, the brewery suggests. They should sell them. It's between $150 and $200 a bottle, but I have seen them on eBay for up to $300. One of these days, I might open one of them. I, don't know. <laughs> I hope I don't die before I get to drink them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite beer right now? I know that you probably have several, but just the first one that pops in your head. My favorite? Are you talking about something that a, a go to beer, or are you talking about something special that I reviewed? I mean, either or. What's the first thing that pops in your head when you think favorite right now? Favorite right now when I get home is the Bell's Too Hard Today. Bell's is one of my favorite breweries, you know. Um, I'm not that's, sure if you've ever tried their Kalamazoo Stout. I have. Okay, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite stouts. Yeah, I like the, I like the Too Hard because it's a little sweeter. And it's got a nice hoppiness to it, too. Plus, it's uh, like 7%. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're they're pretty. They do some pretty good work over there. Yes, I I've not had too many of the Bell's beers. I think it's funny. Okay, I got to ask you too. I've seen you know you're getting to the point now where people are starting to make parody beer reviews based on Greg's beer reviews. Yeah, that's some some friends of mine, or should I say, ex friends of mine, are are just uh, have nothing else to do, and they decided that's a a funny thing to do to make fun of me, so that's what they do. So you know these people? I do. Oh wow. No, I didn't. I didn't know that at all. I just I, I wanted to get your opinion on the impact that you're having on people. That I mean, obviously you're you're doing really well if people feel like they have to parody you. You know what you do. Yeah. But. It, it's a uh, it's it's flattering in a way, but you know after several hundred 
videos and make me fun of you kind of get old, you know. Oh, wow. I didn't realize we were getting into that kind of numbers. Oh, yeah. You know, they, this guy has nothing else to do. So, uh, wow. And, you know, if that, if that blows his hair back, I, I don't like it, but there's really nothing I can do about it. If that's what he wants to do, he's actually infringing on uh, my copyrights, but Google makes you jump through hoops to take anything like that down. Yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. I didn't realize we were talking about hundreds. The ones that I see, I just see like, you know, one or two. But that's kind of sad. Somebody's spending that much time doing parodies. Yeah, it really is. It is kind of sad. Like get ready, if you ask me. But anyway, that's part of it. I mean, with almost eighty-seven hundred subscribers, you're gonna you're gonna get another two. Yeah, you put yourself out there, and I mean, some people get jealous, some people get angry, and then and then some people love you. You know. Yeah, so this is true, uh, and, and this got to the point where uh, you know it is what it is, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. So I will move on. Uh, like like the old saying is, it's uh, it's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. So I'm moving on. There you go, man. Have you become like a local celebrity? Like, the, has anybody come up to you and been like, "Hey, you're Greg from Greg's Beer Reviews"? Absolutely. Yeah, I do. There, uh, the beer uh, festivals and, and things they have around here. Uh, I usually try to work them. I'll I'll, uh, I'll do something like pour beer for somebody or something like that, or judge a competition. And I, I have people all the time come up to me and, and, and say that and want to get their picture taken with me. And I have a bottle I have a bottle opener thing that I use when I open the beers and I sell those. And I have one of my subscribers wants me to autograph the one I've been using for two and a half years, and just about wore all the writing off of. And wants me to autograph and send it to him. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of flattering sometimes. By the way, I wanted to ask you, do you still have uh, the green the green bottle opener? Uh, no. You I have a guy that asked me about it this morning, and uh, I think he's going to send me PayPal. If he doesn't send me PayPal by tomorrow, if you want it, I'll be happy to send it to you. I definitely want one. If I got to choose, I would want the green, but I'm definitely going to gonna talk to you after the show about that because I, I want one of those bottle openers, man. I hear you. I only, have, I only got one green one this time, so... Uh, basically, like I said, I, I told him I had it this morning. He emailed me, and I told him I had it, and they gave him my email address. And uh, so we'll see if it, if it comes through. Like I said, if he doesn't send it to me by tomorrow, it's yours. Awesome. Either way, I'm going to get one of the colors that you have. So, oh. I guess another question. I mean, I got a couple more for you here, but where do you see Greg's Beer Reviews going in the next few years? Like, do you have any other big plans? Well. Since I've got into the cigars, you may see cigar and beer reviews or, or cigar pairings with beer uh, coming up in the not too distant future. Uh, as far, and like I said, there, there are some things like actually getting the beer out of the fridge and stuff, but as far as uh, doing anything different or super special, uh, I might do some more on location stuff that I tried to do a couple of weeks ago, but the background noise, the people and stuff, there, unless I can set something up where the people aren't there or we're somewhere where there's not too much background noise, but I have a lot of complaints about the background noise on mm. some of those live location beer reviews. Yeah, my fa I mean, my favorites are the are just the classic and studio, you know, reviews, but I'll still watch the outside ones. Those are still really good, but my favorite is, you know, just the classic. Yeah. You know, I see, I see you, like, maybe doing some traveling. I think people that, especially new release beers, man, I could see you, like, them sending you out to come to come do a beer review on site for a new beer. Uh, yeah, uh, I, you know I'd entertain any options and stuff. And, and like I said, all the local guys that brew beer know who I am and stuff. So uh, uh, I don't know. We'll see what what things bring. Have you ever had anybody travel like very far to just come have a beer with you? I had I've had some friends that I talked to on Skype and other places that. Uh, during their travels to other places, they stopped and had beer and brought me beer from where they're at. And I gave them beer from here or something they couldn't get that I had in the closet. And yeah, sure have. That's going to feel so good to just know that you've had that much of an impact on people. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's humbling sometimes and flattering that I get you know, as many emails. And my big thing is I try to answer all the emails. If you come in on a beer, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer you back. So uh, a lot of people, you know, are impressed with that, but I, you know, I, I kind of want to answer everybody that asks a question. Now, there's a lot of stuff posted on uh, my 
original page and stuff that I don't answer. But if you comment on a beer, I usually, I usually try that to acknowledge. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed that you're really good about that. I mean, hitting people back up. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's a, it's a chore. Like I said, uh, my, all my, when I started this beer review thing, uh, I had all the emails sent to my work email. And uh, uh, I try to answer each one during, you know, during the day or at the end of the day before I leave the shop. And when I leave the shop on Friday, I don't come back into Monday. And sometimes when I get enough, sometimes usually there's over 100 emails when I come in Monday morning. So. Oh, wow. And it takes quite a while to go through and answer, you know, the new subscribers and, and the comments on the beer reviews. <laughs> like a part-time job. <laughs> Well, I think that was the email that I originally sent something to. Was the, that was the only one I could find on YouTube, and yeah. I was probably thrown in with the hundreds. And you know, I was happy to see that you started following me on Twitter. That's how I was able to really send you a direct message. Right. But I try to post it on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and YouTube. So uh, try all those avenues. Okay, and also I got to ask you to. What did you think about uh, Greg Cook's uh, response to your, your beer reviews of Stone? I'm guessing you've seen that, right? I have. Uh, one of my subscribers sent me a, a message saying, have you seen this? And I said, no, I don't think I have. So I went and watched it. And I was kind of blown away by it. So, I mean, and in a, in a way, it's, it's kind of funny and ironic because he's called the Beer Jesus. And I've, you know, been called the beer of Moses, so it's like Moses, it's like Jesus and Moses talking back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I saw and that's fairly recent too. I mean, that was just over the summer, but you should take yeah. him up on on that and do the the week long Greg's beer reviews and then have them tweet it out. Man, that'd be huge. Yeah, and if they make some good stuff. Like I said, I I really like what he does. Yeah, and I mean, they're one of the most respectable, you know, breweries around. Yeah, when you look in the dictionary for uh, an IPA, you don't have a picture of Stone IPA there. That is the uh, that is a quintessential IPA, very tasty beer. Yeah, he does some great stuff. Uh, uh, I was really kind of blown away when I seen that that he took the time to do that for the low me. Got an impact on people, man. You're good at what you do. You uh, you reach out to a lot of people, and people take to it. Uh, yeah. I've kind of gathered that the way it's taken off over the last couple of years. And like I said, I do appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments and everybody watching. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm actually, of course, I got to be having a beer while I'm, while I'm talking to Greg here. Of course, so am I. Are you? What are you drinking? I'm actually having a Smutty Nose Robust Porter. Like I said, I usually drink two or three, and this is probably the last beer of the evening. So I finished it off with something dark, usually. Yeah. I am having a Schlafly Oktoberfest. Very nice. I haven't done any, I haven't, I'm a kind of stickler. I don't get into the pumpkins in October until after Labor Day. Yeah. Well, I, I I was pretty excited to see that they've, that Schlafly at least released their pumpkin ale on their Oktoberfest. It's my favorite time of year to, for beer, man, it's my favorite. So their Oktoberfest is pretty awesome. Yes. I, I, I I've guess, not had a bad beer from them either. Yeah, no, they're, they're a great brewery and have you tried? Have you tried their Oktoberfest? I didn't even know if that was available to you. I think I have. I think I have tried their Oktoberfest. Yeah. Their beers are very limited here, but I think I have tasted it somewhere. I'm not sure if I reviewed it off the top of my head. Uh, like I said, I, I'm not. If I, I may have. I, I, I'd have to look it up to see. After you get as many as I've done, some of them kind of run together. I bet. Well, man, if you ever find a Schlafly beer that you can't find somewhere, let me know, and I'll be happy to send it to you because I'm pretty much in their backyard. Yeah, they only they only distributed about probably four beers here of theirs. It took a long time to get the IPA here. It wasn't available here for a long time. And then, real quick before I let you go, because I mean that's really all the questions I have. Um, do you prefer the spring summer line of beers, or do you prefer the fall and winter? If you had to pick. Uh, I don't have I don't have a choice on way because the fall and winter beers bring the darker beers and the more tasty beers, and the spring and summer beers bring the hoppier beers. So it makes me happy both ways. There you go. That's a that's a true beer so, lover right there. Yeah, yeah, I really don't I don't suffer very much. <laughs> <laughs> they always got something good coming up. Yeah, and and uh, speaking of uh, spending a lot of money on beers and stuff, 
I'm a partner with Google. So uh, from every time that, you know, somebody watches my beer reviews and clicks on all the advertisements, they, I make money on that. So I get a check from them about every six weeks about doing beer reviews. So that's a pretty neat gig to have somebody pay you to drink beer. Well, that's good to know. I mean, maybe now I'll actually click on some of the ads that I see instead of just uh, furiously hitting X on them. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, they uh, frown on me telling you to do that, so we're not allowed to do that. Wow. But, yeah, that's uh, every time somebody clicks on an ad, old Greg gets a couple pennies. Well, that's good to know. Uh, that's that's definitely useful information for people that uh, really enjoy what you've done for them. And I feel like, you know, I look at it in a way where you're doing something that you enjoy, but, man, five years from now, somebody could go back and, like, hey, I heard of this beer. Let me go see if I can find anything on it. And they'll run into, like, beer review 372 and it's it's an in-depth description of it like it's a it's a really good way to reach out to people and you know you're you're doing good for people man yeah i get comments every day from beer reviews i did two years ago i mean uh, the people are when they buy these beers and never had them they look it up and they check it out and see that i reviewed it nine it's, times out of ten if you if you get a beer and you type it in at the top I'm usually the first response back. You know, I'll be at the top of the list of reviewing the beers and I'll be so many of them. And it's a really useful tool. Like I said, I mean, I've I've tried several, several beers just based on your recommendations. And well, I'm pretty, thanks, appreciate it. Oh no, man, you've never never steered me wrong, and that's you know, you're a straight shooter. Well, I, you know, and, and like I keep saying, beer is subjective. I might tell you that I love this beer; and it's the best thing I've ever had. And, and then you might, you know, you might get it and say, oh, this is nasty. How can he even say that? <laughs> and I have had those responses back from people, you know, and it, it is. And, and I, as long as I don't get vulgar or anything, I'll say, well, I appreciate it, you know, and all that. I guess thanks for your info. But um, it's a, it's a, it's a objective thing, you know. It's, uh, and, and if you, if you get into craft beers, the more you drink them, the more you'll kind of agree with what I'm saying because, uh, your palate will change, and you and I'm not saying that the macros or, or the uh, the lagers are bad, yeah. but there if you're drinking something that has a lot of adjuncts and other crap in it that shouldn't be there, rice and corn, it's going to dilute the beer. And, and, and some people like that taste. If you get acquired to the diluted grassy stuff, you know it's hard to break break away from them. But I, I life's too short. I want to I want to drink stuff that you know comes from around the world. I couldn't agree more. There's so much out there to try. And that's Absolutely. that's really good advice to give someone that's new to the craft beer scene. And just in closing, what do you think would be a good place to start if people want to get into craft brews? Well, you need to start with something lighter. I mean, you just need to get something that's going to have a little more taste than what you're drinking. Uh, if you're into lagers, you know, get into something. Get, get a Boston lager. If you, if you have tried something that's a little hoppier. I mean, yeah, pick up a, a, a Ranger or a Bells or a Founders or a Stone or a Dogfish Head. There are just so many to choose from. But my biggest thing is to tell you, if, if you're drinking Bud Miller or Coors, don't go grab a 8, 9, 10% or something that's going to blow your palate out of your mouth. You need to transition to it, you know, a little bit at a time. You're going to get a bad, you're going to get a bad taste in your mouth, if you will, if you jump off that ship in too deep of water. Oh yeah, I've had some. Uh, I've had some of those uh, bourbon aged, you know, barrel ales that some people would yeah. be like, "Oh, I drink. I can. I can handle a thirty pack of Natty Light. Like I can definitely drink that." And it just knocks them out. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Or or they don't like the taste of it because it's just too heavy for them. Oh. Well, I mean, that's that's really all I have, Greg. And thank you so much for coming on. I mean, it really means a lot to me to be able to sit here and have a conversation with you. Well, this is the second show that I've done. Uh, I had Jay Thomas call me from his little thing, a serious satellite match show. Uh, I don't know, it's probably been about six or eight months ago, and I, and I did a little same thing with him, and they broadcast it on the satellite radio. So it was a pretty interesting uh, conversation. But I, I appreciate you contacting me and, and, and asking me on. Oh, no, not a problem. And Anybody out there that wants to check Greg out, you can find him at YouTube. If you just go to youtube.com backslash Greg's Beer Reviews, um, you can find him on Twitter at Greg's Beer Review, and pretty much just Google him, and you can find him yeah. anywhere. He's out there. Yeah, Facebook, Greg Puckett. Uh, I mean, you just type that in, and usually it'll, 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 it'll send you towards me. 
There you go. And see uh, see what he's done in the past. If you're if you're on the fence of a beer, chances are he's had it and he's reviewed it in detail. So check him out. Yeah, you send me a shoot me an email or something, and I'll ask me. I don't see a review if you had this. Some of the beers I've had, I haven't quite reviewed yet, so I may have had it and can give you some information on it. So there you go. He's the source. All right. Well, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh, you know, we'll be right back on CSP. Greg, thanks again. Not a problem. I appreciate it, everybody. Great good beer. And now another nugget of everyday wisdom with Kenny Many Killer. You ever been like watching Dancing with the Stars and thought to yourself, "Man, I could do this. This is easy." So like, you put on some tunes, you crank them up, and, like, strip down your skivvies and you're fucking like, dancing around your apartment all by yourself. And you notice the dogs watching you, and kind of got his head cocked to the side, like, "What the hell are you doing?" And you just think to yourself, "Man, I had it. I was in it. It was." It was there. That was it. That fucking dog, man. And that was another piece of everyday wisdom with Kenny Many Keller. <laughs> 